Now looks like the pause is done and we are underway. We'll see how they want to start up these lanes to begin with. Uh -huh. And looks like Gabby oh, is going to start off moving oh, towards bot God. here. This might be their attempt to try and actually find early kill with the benefits they get out of the tag team and the Chen Aura. That is a feasible goal. Yeah, definitely. Whenever you're starting with the Tusk, with the Tusk King, you can get yourself a first blood. Now the thing is, you're playing with the Darks here. This is problematic. Like I, I, I see this in pubs done a lot, and I have to warn against it. If you're if you're going on on these two first bounty runes with Darks here and Tusk, if you know that you're gonna have you're, that you're gonna get a kill, waste that time shall get it on top of you and just trade hits, right? It's good. But if you're not so sure if you think it's gonna fail, save it for as long as possible. Save that mana. It, it's not good. If you waste an iron shell, it's not even about the mana, it's the way you start the lane. Um, it would be much better for them to just go and kill that first wave instantly under the tower, behind the tower, exactly there somewhere. Uh, just block the creep wave before I, and make. AM farm under the tower. He can do it. He's not really the worst hero for that. But again, you're you're definitely getting level two and level three afterwards. With darks here, and after that happens, then you can start pressuring. It's definitely the type of combo that can do that effectively. When you have these two kind of bulky heroes in the off lane, you typically look to just cut on that second wave, stack it, or pull it through, and then get creep equilibrium in your favor. It's not it's not an easy lane either for Tusk too. If if Jakiro leaves and goes top with Sand King, you're gonna be left versus Vibrant that has Arctic Burn to jump across your um Oh, hello Tusk. Again, he's walked into the dragons. Not two but three of them really. Tim's losing half of his HP pool straight away. He has a salve, but he only brought three tangos out with him as well. So he'll just look to just try and conserve as much as possible the tango. Yeah, that time shell has been used on him. They're still waiting around. They want to try and value. I mean, it's been committed now, so you just want to make sure you at least get those two runes because Snaking's already snuck in top. He'll definitely grab both of those. And Cuckoo is going to head up, so they want the Darkseer versus Sand King matchup for good reason. Yeah, it You'd much rather have the Darkseer dodge anti-mage than not, right? That's the main main thing. It's not that you want to have him versus Sand King that much. It's that you don't want to have uh, Darkseer versus anti-mage. That's, that's all that there is to it. Yeah, like Sand King kind of by a level 3 start popping down your wave. But the thing is, you will get some gold out of it. As opposed to the anti-mage scenario where we discussed. Even at level 1, he could just, just right-click and chase onto you. And you'll you never pretty have much just trade off. farm versus the Sand King. That's all. AM just right clicks you, takes down your mana, and you find yourself in a really rough spot. But it's good for them because they're, they're going to be able to try lane, and we're going to see a tree on tree action here. We are. Around the trees, in fact. And, well, that, oh, the AoE damage. TNC is starting to realize you don't want to play around these choke points up against MSS on that Jakira. They'll just use the first Metamorphosis to try and secure some farm. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, there was a favorable block start from Armel, but it's starting to go back towards and in favor of CCNC. Especially, like, this is actually the rough part about this lane is because you're such a short-ranged hero, Monkey King is almost always going to get that Jingu. Oh, yeah. First few levels, like, he dominates. And he's doing exactly that right now. You can see four denies on him, two lasted. TA is not really having a good time at all. If he gets this range creep deny as well, oh, he doesn't. Well played by Armel to get those side blades out. Do you think he goes for an early Orb of Venom just to guarantee the Jingu every time? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. It's something that many players do when they're on aggression. But he's fearing only tangles for now to that mid lane. Let's see if he changes his mind as it goes on. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep it as a 1v1 top and the 3v3 down bot. But this is a this, this is Voltar on both sides, right? One side has a Jakiro, one of the better heroes in the game for these trial lane scenarios. The other, we've already mentioned, tag team plus that Divine Favor aura. It's on TNC to be the aggressors and on forward gaming to abuse that. And you can see it right here. Yeah, just and burn just them down. Punish them. The problem for... It's all about the way the game starts, man. These lanes, I, I remember so many times with my own teams. It's all about the, the pre-lane action, not even the lane action. Remember when Tusk moved onto those stairs and ate so much damage? It completely put him in a passive position early on in the lane. And then they couldn't really aggress them with that first meta used. So... <laughs> Everything matters in this game. Every single second. It's so, 
it's so weird to explain, but that Tusk losing two tangos there as he was going to the high ground completely changed the dynamic of this lane afterwards. As you cannot, uh, you cannot use the, the courier to get yourself more region. You have to play defensively. You have to play in a different way. And now Jakiro, I'm gonna try and this punish is it. Tag team slowing him down. The ice shards did block him off. MSS, he might just get away with this though. He's just going on tan. Now they're just blinking. Tim's needs to retreat. Ice shards bounce out. Tim's pretty low. Yeah, while back away, the reflection will just harass him out a bit. He has a solve. He has a solve, so he can use it. He can pop it back and he can go back into the lane. This little creep is pretty good for the movement speed as well. It gives you, what, 12% movement speed. Early on, it's not a lot. You don't even have boots, so percentage is not that great. But overall, it's all right. And like you said, it's a resource battle, and the difference is that while Monkey King is going to take control of that Corey and use it a lot in the mid, he's that Corey is not as locked to his lane as it is for his counterpart. Look at TA, almost dead already, and this is going to be a recurring theme. You're going to use that Corey more than the Monkey King by far. Yeah, and this TA has to be careful. CCNC has enough mana for the Boundless Strike. But he knows if he tries to, she's just going to pop Refraction Charge. <laughs> oh. He almost got him with the side blade there. But he had a south ready. And now Armel needs to be careful because he's out of mana. He does have the Mango. He can't afford to make Venom a mistake is there. here. Yeah, he can't keep up though. Luckily for Armel. Yeah, we didn't really talk a lot about that top lane. But there isn't really a whole lot we can talk about. It's just he's, uh, Cuckoo and Snake King just trading it out. They like farming. That's I, I think that's the good analysis, Liz. Let's move back to the bot lane. <laughs> where aggression should renew. Ice shards come out, but it's against Pilai Dai. He'll just fly over the top. Taking a lot of damage. Reflection will slow him down as well. Metamorphosis was activated for this. And they cannot even find the Wyvern kill. If they're not careful, A, you might get turned around on. If... If it was any other two heroes, right, it, not Jakiro and Winter Wyvern, I believe they would have died so many times by now. Uh, versus the Tusk Chen and Metamorphosis, it's such a strong tri-lane. Tri but Jakiro, 780 HP. Winter Wyvern, 800 plus the Arctic Burn to fly across the, the shards. They just have two very strong supports on this lane to help out Yavar's anti -mage. Meanwhile, mid Armel almost died. Uh, he was quite lucky to get away there. Belly any HP and didn't have the refraction available. But he needs to be oh. careful. CCNC is going to dive this. He has the balance strike to work with. He opts not to because he understands that there's a possibility of someone porting in and there's also trees that he, he can be joked in. Oh, they get balanced. He just wants the life still. Runes are up. Tim secures them, but actually doesn't. As Yawar picks it up, the tag team, the ice shards being used, but they will get nothing out of this. And that's actually going to be three runes going the way of Ford. On Mm -hmm. Tims? Tims is dead. They're just going to run him through. No man to work with. He's got the mango, but what would he actually cast? Sidestep oh, them. Final hit. The come out though. The Jukes and the body blocks. They don't and hit the with south. the burn. And the salve is out. Tims retreating to the south because you are... At the same time mid. Waiting and in First the mid. Blood. Wow, he dies through the task. CCNC gets the kill. Yeah, CCNC though. He had those boundless strike charges. And this... Hit him with. Oh, this matchup. This, this is just where now TA has to supplement the jungle, right? You can't come back. We've seen this time and time again, especially with these type of aggressive heroes. Once one takes an XP advantage, the lane tends to become untenable. To be honest, it's Monkey King. Once he gets that advantage, he just starts... It's so important to shut down Monkey King early on, but they couldn't afford to move from this bottom lane because it would just be crushed afterwards. And it's worthless as well because you put yourself in this... Ta like, you've got tag team, you've got the threat of task. But actually, just pause that fort because Gabby's in trouble being chased on too. Speaking of tag team, he gets forced out. Tims, he's in the middle of the triangle of Radiant Heroes, though. Loses half his HP pool. And this is the problem. Look at the XP. Level 3 versus level 2. You're already losing this lane. And I think it would be fair to say the supports of TNC are more level dependent than the ones of Ford. Speaking of things happening, top lane, CCNC making rotation. Speaking of things happening, we're going to see this a lot. Uh, after that first blood, he gets another raid band, he gets boots, and uh, we, he, this is one of the easiest heroes to snowball with. If Monkey King gets a good start and you start just building these mid-game items, you don't have to go for anything huge, right? So, like some Echo Sabers, Diffusal, whatever you opt to go for. Uh, you can create so much space across the map as long as those items come on time. If they're uh, just one minute, one minute, 30 seconds delayed, it's not as potent. But this time around, he had a good laning stage. He also got the first blood. I believe CCNC should prove why this hero is so strong on mid. Yeah, and your arsenal of abilities are designed to support that aggression, right? It's not like the Templar Assassin that will get to six and can stave off aggression, but also use it to farm creep waves, for example. 
He's always through this game going to be looking to fight. And then the worry is if he's doing that, there's not going to be value lost because you know eventually this anti mage should be able to take over the game. So far, he has suffered though. He is lowest in terms of CS out of all the cores in the game. We see Jakiro rotating middle. And TA might be in problems. She does have two traps here, though. They're going to run fourth, though. They're going to activate the second trap. Balance Strike comes out, and they'll stave off their aggression. Can't really do a lot to her with those two traps there. They need to bring out the sentry, and they did. MSS does have one sentry and with. He used coming Shen in, rotating though. in, though, yeah. Yep. And they're going to bring teams across. You want to see them retreat towards mid, and it's going to happen. Snowball and attack team as well. Monkey King going to be overwhelmed. He hasn't got any Boundless to work with, and he hasn't actually got any Jingu either. They're going to turn around, looking on MSS next, chasing forward. They're slowing him down so much right now. Armal will just plow through and get himself a double kill. How is Monkey King balanced? Well, he's balanced in a way that he's really squishy. If you get on top of him, if you have the control, you're going to kill him, right? And uh, it all comes down to this. Are you being hunted or are you the hunter when you're playing the Monkey King? I, I think it's really important for him to not show himself way too much on the lane, but rotate as much as possible like he's doing right now to the top lane to catch Cuckoo. Yep, might be for the second time. He's got a TP to get out. He's going to use the Surge to try and move away. They got the Barrow Strike. They'll slow him down on the Balance Strike. He moves towards the tower. Barrow Strike connects, and he should fall. They'll try and give the kill over to Yawar, but instead the tower takes it. Tower takes it. They share the bounty, but they do kill that kill that Darkseer. However, they just showed four heroes on that top lane. Instantly, Terrorblade is just farming completely freely on this bottom lane. He's not worried at all that someone is going to come and contest him anytime soon. He also understood that CCNC ported top, so if he wants to get bottom, he needs to he needs to jump a lot of trees to get there, little monkey. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? When you're you monkey in that scenario, because that was a kill so deep in your own area of the map, you've now got the Jingu. Mm -hmm. Where's the closest kill, right? It's the TA on the other side of the map. And the reason we do see the Monkey King played in the middle a lot of the moment is I think mid one now of any person would be fair to kind of defines this hero is he'll basically get his hands on Jingu straight away off to a lane. One of the outer lanes because there's a short route quickly across and that is the true epitome of the snowball aspect of this hero is it's in the Jingu. Once that's activated, you can fight. As we saw, he lost the mid fight because it wasn't online. Yeah, because they attempted to go for that uh, TA. It was a little bit of a greedy move. They didn't get anything out of it, and then Monkey King dies afterwards as he's stuck in that lane for a bit too long. And all the while, before gaming moving around like this, I'm just checking for stacks, because one thing you will notice coming out from this Chen is he's pretty committed. The triangle for TNC is stacked heavily, so Templar Assassin can go there and recover. They're going to recall someone to bottom lane. I'm just wondering who it is. It's going to be Cuckoo. Yeah, so they're going to commit two cores here. Cuckoo gonna just, is going to just creep skip while Terrorblade... Well, he's going back to the hard camp, but I believe there's... They will make some sort of an aggressive movement very soon. They can't kill Armel either because they don't have a point in the ice path yet. Uh, mid lane might be the action again. Yeah, it might turn around. He is coming around the back right now because Monkey King is playing super aggressive. CCNC will scout it out though. They're calling They're calling in. Stomp's going to slow him down. Reinforcement should be on the way. TP's coming in right now. And there it is. Snowball across the attack team. They're going to actually protect him with the cold embrace. And now they need to retreat. Armel be chased onto. Ice Path's going to connect. It's now been leveled. They jump in the tree. They jump forward. Armel overwhelmed. Chen will fall on the side as well. But the bigger kill is the Templar Assassin. It's all about utilizing every single second that you have in the most optimal way when you're making these ganks. If you are one second late, just one second this happens. And you know why they were late? They had the recall, they had all the spells ready, but Tusk was defending top and the creep was on him. So they were basically waiting for Tusk to finish off a creep so that he can be recalled from fog. And that's, that's the issue, like you're, you're not risking it, you recall him after the, the creep has been killed and it's too late. Like you go there, but everyone is porting in already and you they needed two centaur stuns before Tusk was even there, right? So it, it's just too late. There's not enough damage. Monkey survives and they make that turn kill. And now, Gabi in the woods, caught. Yep, he'll have the shrine to try to keep him alive. He hasn't leveled the sun. He'll finally get enough XP to do so, but can he use it? No. The splinter last finishes him off, and they'll charge four. Tims will get in the tree line before they see him. But now they're going to try and just take away some of this gold that's been stacked up by the Chen over the course of this early game. You can take some small camps, but you can't really contest the uh, Ancients. You have no heroes that can take down Ancients right now on the side of uh, forward gaming. Instead, they go towards this tier one on the bottom lane. And you can see how much better this lineup is working for them this time around. Uh, 
last game they were completely crushed. I believe they were out drafted. As you can see that in this game, it, it's not so. It's not so bad. No, and Tim's meme on the middle lane is actually finally getting that XP he desperately needed on the task. The problem is MSS is here doing the same, and we've seen what Jakira can do with a few levels. It's that easy shove out lane, right? It's his type of hero. He's been played a little bit more skillfully in more recent months, but it's always. If that fails you, you've got Makapa, you walk to a lane, you drop it. If you die, you've shoved out the lane and done your part. Mm -hmm. CCNC is trying to get towards the Echo Saber about halfway. Anti Mage, long way off on that Battle Fury. And the concern is if you're matching pace with a Terra Blade as you go into like that, towards that 20 minute mark. There is a worry that TNC will just start to push aggressively and take all your minions. They, they most certainly will. You you have to just wish that you're matching pace as TB farms faster early on. Uh, once you get that Battle Fury on, the, on line for Yavar, then he kind of takes off, right? He just skyrockets with his farm and creep skips and whatnot. Right now he's not there yet. Cuckoo has to be careful as they are setting up a gank. Sand King is there and so is AM. Yeah, but they're just going to move away. They were scouting out. They didn't want to wait around too long. They do have Ward Vision over Armel, but they can't easily go deep while this Tier 1 tower is still standing. So probably the next move for Ford Gaming, the next minute or two, is to take down that Tier 1, open up the jungle, because they're, you mentioned they're, it. TNC they're already the mid. You can see four heroes there. And this is critical, because we said TNC, they're very greedy with these two cores. They want to be in the jungle, and Chen wants to find creeps as well. By the way, a small subtle buff to Jakiro uh, to Liquid Fire, you can't evade it any longer. It's not evaded by if you go to Invis or if you go to High Ground, there is no mischance on it. There is a mischance, but it's still going to burn around you, so it's going to hit everything yes. around you. So it's a pretty good buff. I think Only Mischief can still dodge it, though, because that's invulnerability, right? So. Darkseer surged in. We have the Tau. Wukong's been thrown down. Snowball charging forward. Warish punch onto the Wyvern. Pylai dies still alive, though. Has a witness curse to work with and hold on to it. Fire strike out. Hand of God to try and keep Tims alive. Gonna get him low. He needs to shut up the high ground. He'll make it. No one dying so far, but then Wyvern right at the end will go down. Cuckoo surged up, trying to make his escape. Snaking has the Burrow strike, but doesn't have a blink dagger. You are chasing in. And... Cuckoo's going to waste their time. I don't know if he'll be able to get out, though. He could try for the TP if it wasn't on cooldown for 25 seconds. He just has to go the long, longest way around. But, yeah, but snaking still snaking, there. yeah. In the trees, I believe he might catch him right here. There, there we go. go. Fire strike through. They'll burn through his mana slowly, but surely Cuckoo, maybe he gets away from this. He's still got enough mana. And, so and avoids. Yeah, he has way too much HP. It's not only the mana, it's the fact that he's built into a vanguard and the cloak, so it's not really an easy hero to take down at the moment. Even if you do man avoid him, it's not your normal darks here with uh, headdress, buckler, and arcane boots right now. Has a vanguard, so he's really tanky. And instead, Cuckoo just baby the EU says, let me go farm again. They actually did drop the Macropar in the mid lane, but Armel will be fine. Winner's Curse comes out. Maybe he won't now. They're getting ready to set up, moving in. Epicenter, they do the Barrow Strike, doing a lot of damage, and Armel is gone. So they trade their midders on, on one side. Monkey King dies on the other Armel. The bigger value, of course, gained by Ford Gaming again because they find that tier one tower as well. So when Monkey King is up, they can immediately look to explore deep into TNC's side of the map. Yeah, so far they have uh, rotated the gro across the map much better than TNC. Um, and you can see that the roles have switched. This Chen hasn't really found his place in the game at the moment, at least. He, does, he did do a couple of relocates, a couple of recalls uh, to different tier ones. Specifically, they tried to aggress the top one and the bottom tier one. It just didn't work out for them as forward gaming okay. responded much better and their heroes are much better at doing that right now. They're more, more suitable to just uh, stall this aggression of TNC off and also aggress on their own, try to get some towers. And this seems to have been definitive of the game is the way they responded early on compared to last game where Ford gave TNC a few minutes window where they could get online. Snowball cross on to Pylai die or his punch will get rid of the pesky wyvern. But they can't pursue into the Monkey King. They have got four heroes up here, though. So TNC likely to turn this into a tier one put. Oh, he's nice caught. Shot. CCNC, he revealed himself. Now he's in trouble. Balance Strike goes down, interrupts the Centaur. But Surge of Ford has better go on any HP left. He'll kill it off in time. The TP's come in. Ice Path is out. AU being chased onto. Fire Strike through. They have to leave the Chen behind. No way he gets out in one piece. They lose the Chen. But there is the Sand King with his dagger reveal. And only for the Chen. So if you are TNC, you're, you're pretty satisfied with that. However, I get more. Oh, Tim's. <laughs> Barely got out. Cuckoo, Think however. Him, blink forward. Bar strike is out. Cuckoo the target. She better slam down a bit. Macropa thrown in for just a little bit extra. And they time it perfectly to stop the surge. No, he gets it off still. Cuckoo 
will escape. They need to get this tower to get any value out of this. But in the meantime, speaking of towers, Gabby just burned through one in the bot lane. Yeah, he barely got out there. And the, the worst part for them is they didn't have creeps. The creeps were so far, far away. And also killed down one of the creep waves was killed by TA's trap. So they couldn't really turn that into a tier one. They are gonna, they are going for that tier one right now. But you already lost yours and Gabi is still pressuring your bottom tier two. Meanwhile, Cuckoo is still just lingering around, making sure they can't get much damage in here. They have to send someone back to deal with Gabby. Snake King is here. Problem is he can't go onto the mid lane. Iwar just being a frustrated a little bit by Tim's aggression, proving that ha, he's still in farming mode. You barely got any HP to work with. Mm, Tim's basically uh, forced him out of the lane and that's it. You, he never expected to kill him, but forcing him out is just as good. Stop, stop him from farming. Probably looking at it and going, wait, I just hit him for that much, though? Oh, wow, well, Max Tag Team really is the bee's knees. Armel, he's not going for the Blink Dagger next. He feels the need to get his hands on a BKB as quickly as possible. Well, I can't really blame him. Look at that team. You were playing versus Sand King, Jakiro. There is Winter Vibe versus you, though. Speaking of Sand King, he just set up a kill. And got it as well. I, I think Blink Dagger and afterwards BKB would be just as good. His his option is to be a bit safer to go for that BKB right now. And if if you see a TA doing that, you most likely expect them to just go five man and play play around their strengths right now as soon as it comes online. So as soon as that BKB comes, they're gonna start fighting if he goes for that BKB first. Yeah, and, and critically we tend to see this Deso and if not a blink, then something like a BKB next when you have enablers, right? And you've got that. You've got a Dark Sea with surges, you've got the snowball potential, the tusk. There are the means to get in via other heroes. Bottom lane, they forced Wukong's yeah. command, but uh, nothing happened on the top lane now. Yeah, it looks like Cuckoo's in trouble. They actually do throw out the Winner's Curse just to stop him. He might be able to get a, a surge out, but no, the Ice Path should secure his fate. They'll just one dart, but it's too late. They didn't get the ta- Oh, they, di they didn't get the die out. Well, it's rough, but how many heroes is that? That was three heroes coming in. They used the Winner's Curse. Do you kind of feel okay with that if you're Darks here? No. You, yeah, you're fine. You forced a lot of rotations there, but you'd much rather not die, obviously. As that tier one, it falls eventually. It's not really an easy tier one to defend. But you're creating space. Your TA is farming. Your your uh, Terror Blade is also farming, so it's not horrible. Well, he's trying to make himself even more unkillable now. He's picked up the Crimson Guard. But if we're being realistically honest here, it's not the physical damage he has to be worried about at this stage in the game. As we saw in a preview there, it's the magical damage output of TNC. And now, Snowball charging in the CCNC. Nice time on the balance strike. The Ice Path as well, going to turn around. But there's the epicenter charged up. And Tim's, he'll just be left alone. He's like, where's my team? TNC, they say, we're back in our jungle. We need to no, go the, farm. The moment that Monkey King wasn't caught on the, uh, on the creep camp, you're done. You're just getting out. You're cutting your losses. You're, you're saying goodbye to your Tuscar and you're just trying to get out. And they use the Metamorphosis as well. And Gabby will reveal on the Creep Wave in a second, so they'll know about this. In fact, CCNC might try for something, but he needs to be careful due to the Sunder. Things are coming out. He wants some reinforcements. And Tusk just warning Gabby, they are going to be around there. Especially seeing as they have that ward down, so they know. Yeah, TA did get that link, by the way. So the BKB is coming after. Speaking of TA, caught in the mid lane, or he's snaking the one who's caught. Going to surge forward, they slow him down with the trap. Vacuum back, but a little bit too tanky for them. Instead, they'll force out the Glyph, because TNC want to get rid of this tier 1 mid soon. If he did go for a BKB earlier, he would just... The Blink is better because you can initiate on them, you can jump on them, you, you're you more mobile, you have Refraction afterwards, uh, after all to work with. It feels like if you get your hands on the BKB, you're more or less, like, it's not a min defeat, but it, it feels a bit like that, because you're, what you're essentially saying is, I'm counter-initiating. I'm not ever act... I'm not proactive. I'm just reactionary to anything you do on the map. Yeah, you're, you're forced into it if you're doing it. Uh, w one of the item builds for uh, TA that's similar is Power Threads to Raid Bands, Dazzle, and Dragonlance. It kind of allows you to do a similar thing because it beefs you up a little bit. But in this kind of a game, even that is impossible as the amount of damage, it would just tick straight through you. Thus far, Ford Gaming are keeping the net worth about even. Their anti-mage, of course, does have the Battle Fury now, so expect him to start to just accelerate forward of his opponents. Although, maybe, considering Gabby has 10k net worth, it might just be at the point where he's up. Go in. Actually, get him! 
That was a quick kill onto a very tanky target. Now they're going to chase forward looking for more. Pilai Dai needs to just get up to the high ground, but he can't vacuum back. Luckily for him, he flies long enough. Ice bar foul. MSS just going to be aggressed by Cuckoo. They just want to secure that tier one mid, but they're going to keep going for more. Ice Puff is available again, and they might need it, but it looks like Tim's looks the wrong way. They took him down in a matter of seconds there on that mid lane. Won wondering why he didn't use his Yules on the TA or himself, and then perhaps Winter Wyvern is close enough to use Cold Embrace or Winter's Curse and save him. In either way, Snaking dies, and uh, it's a good pick off for TNC as they transform it instantly into that tier one. And all the while, for gaming, they're in this scenario where Anti-Mage can't look to fight, he just needs to split push, so the pressure is actually on Monkey King to make the plays. You'd expect Sand King to be backing him up, but once again, it's this type of hero that wants to be out on a lane, pushing and finding value that way. Mm -hmm. Thus, easily punishable. Makes you wonder when TNC are going to be looking into the pit. It's a bit rough for them to go, but optimally, you want to get it soon. With Templar Assassin, your lineup, but when you're up against a you Sand King, a well. Wyvern... You have a Chen, you're, you're playing with the TA, Dazzle. Uh, there's definitely the option to go into the pit and try to take that Roshan as soon as possible. But then again, as you said, you're playing versus Jakiro, Vibrant, and Sand King. Tims is playing against the entirety of full game on his own. Yeah, he played. He tried to play with that Sand King. It didn't really work out very well for him. I mean, it's a good move if you die down here. Th this, however, they might smoke up instantly now. Uh, let's see, because they can recall the Tusk, right? Well, Ford are the one smoked. They're moving in right now. Barra Strike comes across. Makapar thrown down. TA has no refraction up. Crimson Guard to try and protect, but the damage might already be done. They can actually try and heal up with Chen, but it's not enough. They kill him off. The buyback forced out of Tim's for nothing. They can try and move. Counter initiate here. CCNC has the Wukongs going down, though. And Cuckoo, he went a little bit too deep. The Winner's Curse comes out to slow down Gabby, and they separate the two. Darkseer on the side alone. With well, no HP left, will go down, and that should be the pit secured for Ford if they want it. But I think they will just look to just push the lanes further. That's a buyback on Task Forced. You killed the TA, you forced the uh, Darkseer wall, and your anti-mage wasn't even there. Meta was also used by uh, Gavi. So a huge success, huge victory for Forward Gaming coming off of that one smoke action. And Tim's is lingering around. He's... He's in that state of mind, right, where it's like, I need to find some value. Warrus Punch will come out, but if he's not careful, they just might turn it around into a kill on him. Yules is there. Ice Path is down. And now they're going to charge up the Epicenter. Snake King says, let's go, Tim. Snowball forced out. Blink away. They're going to drag him away from the safety of his team. And now he needs to get out, but he can't. The Barrow Strike connects. Ice Path as well. And he's dead. That's a dieback. They've been here for a really long time, and they might get punished for this, though. There's no Metamorphosis. The, the sentry is already killed, and because of that, they cancel the pursuit. So they, they take down Tusk once again. That's a dieback for him. Not really having the best game ever. Mm. I think the word we use is it's been a bit of a klutz. You know, that, that was... That was... It felt like that mentality, right? Where it's like, okay, I just bought back. We need some value out of this. And What they need, they need a BKB on Armel. They need it as soon as possible. This Blink Dagger, we both agreed, agreed with it. It's good. It's a necessity for a TA. But th they're pretty much useless until she gets that BKB. Once she gets that BKB, she can start playing the game. Uh, in most likely in that last fight, even if she did have the BKB, she still falls because they initiated from a smoke, right? And they chain locked her. You have the Ice Path, you have Sand King Stun, there, you have Boundless Strike. There, there's a lot of chain locks for her. But once she gets that BKB, they can look at smoking up and creating actions themselves instead of being the ones that are just being battered across the map so far. One thing that they're meant to be doing. Not being battered, but actually being active because you are top of net worth now. He's got his Manta. Heading towards the butterfly next. It won't be long before anime starts to get out of control. Meanwhile, the mid lane Tusk. Tips, you just died here a moment ago. And it'll be going down again. This time around, he didn't even use the snowball. They actually throw down the winner's curse. CCNC with the Wukongs as well. Looking on the dark sit. Balance strike. Taking a lot of damage here. Dark sit getting low. Cuckoo trying to move away. Just about gets out of range. Armel holds the high ground alongside Gabby. They can't look to initiate into the Wukongs. They have to wait it out. And you can already see Ford moving to the right side so they can back out. MSS will even escape through the north as no one was paying attention to him. AM moves in to just cut the creep waves, make sure there's no opportunity to push on the Double damage. Him. What a perfect rune to spawn right in front of the Roshan as they're going to use that meta, I believe, yeah, and they go straight into the pit. Vyvern is dead, and even if he buybacks, he has no ulti, and they understand that. AM, they see him. Yep, and they've got the epicenter from Sand King, but that's it. And you can already see Cuckoo addressing that factor by just poking and prodding at him. Macropar goes down. It's too late, though. 
Aegis has been claimed. Oh, they actually got the kill on the Roche, though. Aegis will go into the hands of Gabby still. CC and Seal just back up. At least you managed to snatch the gold away from TNC. That's so unfortunate. That Macro Pyre is the thing. That Macro Pyre pretty much killed it. So they lost it to the dot. It's it's just not something that happens very often. Very unfortunate for them, as Terrorblade also used the BKB. But hey, they take down a they take down Roche, they get the Aegis, it's fine. Uh, the only problem is AM wasn't really there, he was just farming the whole time. And is this TA gonna get the mag? So no, she goes, uh, I mean obviously she's not. Uh, goes for Orchid, it's an item that they need in this kind of a game. You need to be able to jump on top of these targets, take them down on your own. Uh, Monkey is the one that suffers from, from Orchid, but most importantly, Vivern can't use his spells. AM, if he used his Manta, is gonna suffer too. It's also a case of, you know, you could go for the beam me up Scotty build, as I like to call it, with the Ags, where you move around the map, but usually you want a ganker with you, right? You want someone like a bat rider as an example that can be there ready to go with you. You and need someone. You need need a follow up definitely. You cannot do things on your own unless you have something like a blood torn. And mid lane Armel is being attacked by Pilai Dai, but they're not gonna go for him. It's a bit obvious when a Wyvern is poking and prodding at you like that that something is up. They did. They smoked. Yeah. They did use a the smoke. They wanna punish him for revealing the location. The problem is they can't they need to move towards bot. You have to be realistic here. You don't want to find a high ground. Instead, you want to take this useless tier 2 down to start forcing Ford Gaming's attention towards the bottom side of the Well, you do have Aegis, and in 40 seconds you're going to have Meta 2. It's very unlikely that they're going to completely push down this bottom side, but if they do push it, they will force the reaction of Forward Gaming, which is also a big win for TNC if they manage to do it as they'll force them out of their, of their own jungle. They'll, they'll force them out of the dire jungle. Yeah, and your AC4 trying to get maximum value out of here. They're going to have to submit the Gabby's on the high ground. Some damage is going to be done. This Terrible hits pretty hard at this stage in the game. You can already see the output. Half the health of the tower already down and gone. Going to look to jump in. Monkey King misses the pounce, though. Tried for maximum damage and speed loss. Didn't get it. Barry Strike through. TA the one they want to target. Ice Path as well. Can't get the BKB off just yet. There's too much health. Hand of God. Moving forward. Trying to escape right now. Does have the BKB. Might have to just pop it. There we go. Comes out. Ford Gaming can look to reset, because with the BKB on cooldown, TNC don't want to keep aggressing. Instead, Activate. they have to go top, because Yawa is pushing in. So you didn't really benefit way too much out of it. Uh, you did take down the tower a bit more. You you dealt some more damage to the tower than the Antimage did. But uh, then again, you didn't really benefit way too much, as he's getting that Skadi finished. You didn't force anything with that Aegis. But now that Gabi has the BKB, you might be thinking about it. That was the problem for that bottom push. It was obvious that they aren't going to... they aren't going to fight instantly. The only reason they stuck around for so long is because TA got caught. If, if she didn't, they would have just bailed. They wanted to just make them go back and then move back into their jungle, control it and flush the AM out. It's how you play against them. And it's, it's a costly error though because you allow that damage to go in on your tier 3 top and more to the point you lose that valuable 10 second BKB charge on Armel. Mm. Sloppy mistake. Cost here and see. I, I believe losing uh, that amount of uh, tower HP on that top lane is is the worst thing that happened to them in that whole engagement, as they have to force this bottom fight now in incredibly fast because if they don't, Yavar is just gonna split push top. Yep. Yavar's even gonna pick up some bounties for his team in the meantime. You can already see TNC folks around the bottom bounty runes. They need a pick off. They need a way up onto that high ground. You can see that Yavar isn't even going for the other bounty rune. Instead, he's just pressuring top further. He can come back for a layer. Let However, bottom first. fight. Going in. Ice buff comes out. Tim's the first to fall. Inevitably, usually when TNC are losing these fights, it seems they lose the tusk at the beginning. And now pursuing for more. Hey, he's been found. He won't make it out either. He'll die alongside his comrade support. Double kill for CCNC. And at the same time, they did force a glyph. So this tower is going to be going to be unprotected the next time. They're playing really well forward gaming, that is. They're, they're playing really well across the map against this Aegis. They understand what they have to do. They understand how they are supposed to be splitting TNC, and they're doing it properly. Most importantly, it's Yavar that's not wasting any seconds, just going in straight as they go. It, it splits you up. Uh, the moment you initiate around their shrine, you're thinking, okay, we can fight here, but our top is falling, so we need to do something about it. You're kind of you're kind of caught on the left foot. You you need to go back, but you also want to fight and pressure. You can't decide, and because of that, that that uh, task just dies first, and then you're forced to go back. 
Problematic Aegis is now being reclaimed, so expect Ford to up the aggression. So far, they've managed to keep TNC running back to their base. And in the next few minutes, you might see them just try and keep TNC in their base altogether. There is a butterfly completed on TB, so uh, he's not that easy to kill, but as long as he has that BKB, they all die so fast without their BKBs. The amount of magic damage on forward gaming is significant. Yeah, that's the thing, the chain locking. We saw it come into effect on the Templar Assassin, almost killing off Armel. And that's a hero with similar health, similar armor, but also you have refraction charges that need to be got through first. I say similar armor. It's a TB. He's going to have a lot more, but it doesn't really come into account when we talk about primarily magic damage. You're invis snaking. Moving in. Yeah, he did move around the sentry, so because of that, he moves back. He was. Now they see him perfectly. The pings are coming out. He has got the gem. He wants to deward it. There we go. And things should calm down. This, of course, should benefit the AM, considering he is getting very close to. Oh, what's he going for here? Is this going to be the. MKB? Mm, yes. Most likely, yes. because there's a butterfly. He saw it on TB, so he goes for MKB afterwards. They need a way of uh, taking down Gabby's Terrorblade. He basically has the money. It's just a matter of whether he feels the need to try and save up for buyback, which he's just shy of. I imagine he just invests in the MKB, though. There it is. Yeah, he bought it. Bought it. And that's a big power spike. They might look to aggress off the back of it. They can't find our mount there. No one's in place. Even if you use the Winner's Curse, Snaking is just still busy dewarding all the traps. In fact, he's pretty far forward. Ice Shards is going to come out. They're trying to scare him and use a Barrow Strike prematurely. But he's calm. He's collected. He has Crimson Guards. He has Yules. He has Pylai Dai behind him. It's not that hard to be calm in a situation such as this one, as he knows that he has a backup behind him. Plus, the gem is there for any vision. And it just secures the bot tower push for the side of Ford Gaming because everyone on the side TNC is looking mid. And now you have to look bot because they're on your high ground again. You are. Done a lot of tower damage to the game. Jump in. Stuns out. They're going to find a pick off straight away. And Tim's always dead first. And TNC on the back foot now. The winner's curse comes out. Traps Gabby in with his team. Forces the buyback out from Toss pretty early. Macropy down. Terrorblade down to half HP. Armel chasing four. Barrow strike. Turn around. Looking to jump in. Snowball Good being snowball. used as a protect though. Across. BKB active from Armel. Moving outside the Wukong's command. Tims. He can't afford to go down this early. He's going to actually die. It's going to be a dieback. They're standing their ground. Ford have a lot of health to work with. Snaking down to half HP. But the Crimson Guard is keeping him up for the time being. Used to buy some time. Barrow strike out. Ice Path covers the escape. Cold Embrace. Armel jumping in. Looking to pile light. Die. We'll be able to melt through him. The balance strike down. They're turning around. Armel getting low. Needs to escape. Has got the melt. Refraction comes off cooldown soon. But they can't quite finish him in time. Yes. He gets the refraction up. He has the protection. You're going to back off in time, but in the meantime, Gabby goes down to Snaking. You keep Armel alive, but you lose your Terrorblade. And now you might lose more Cuckoo. He went for the Surge, but the Ice Path connects. Snaking, he does have the Fire Strike follow up, and Darks here should be going on down as well. Vacuum Good into the vacuum. wall. Beautiful vacuum, but it won't be enough. He'll still fall. MSS will back off in time as well. And now, now they just need to get the creeps and get up onto the high ground. They lost their anti mage, but they gained so much more. It looks like they're going to go back instead as Jakiro ports. And after that, I believe everyone else is just going to be satisfied with that fight. They lost their anti-mage, but they took down plenty of targets. They damaged the tower teams. I believe he bought back once again. So, I, I, I think it would be fair to say at this point, Tims doesn't even have a game. Mm -hmm. like, it, he's been shut out so brutally up to this point. Yeah, just Bracer and uh, Urn of Shadows, the 35 oh, minutes in. Oh no, the jump away, Armel! Just in time, the balance strike was a bit too late, but they'll pop through the refraction, still force the BKB out and back away. They were looking for so much more. And Although saying that Tins doesn't have a game is a little bit uh, bad because Tusk... He can he, snowball he, 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 Exactly, and he won them that, that last fight. He pretty much turned... Well, they didn't win it, but he turned it so it's not abysmal for them. Absolutely. It, it, save. I think what would be fair to say is compared to what you usually see from aggression out of task, it's been this game where it's more or less you're relegated to a snowball save and you're just he a has snowball. to be reactionary, yeah, which is exactly. why he needs that blink so quickly soon. Mm -hmm. He's just a snowball for now. Once he gets that blink, it's going to be a little bit easier for him to initiate or to save targets, even, but also not die because he's so deep in. Of course, you always have to be careful against the anti-mage. The chance you actually give a save over to Ford instead. Roche is now up. The scan comes out. TNC know that Ford are near the pit. They don't know whether the Roche is up. Actually, they'll think it is because Monkey King was in range for that scan the entirety of it. 
Instead, CCNC wants to just pounce on the top, but he can't. Darkseer gets recalled, and now Monkey King is away from the fight. They find someone quickly here. TNC could actually just pitch themselves in a vine. They are looking, and they could get a quick pick off. This TA hurts right now with the Blink, with the Orchid, with the Dazzle. But you are playing versus a Vyvern, and as long as he's in a good position, um, it, it is a little hard to take down someone and bur burst them. You can see that Vyvern itemized into a Ghost Scepter. Um, the same goes for Jakiro. He has full Greaves and that Ghost Scepter and level 20, which means plus 150 gold per minute. Like, NSS is going to be one rich dragon in this game. Which will just further increase this disparity between Tusk and the Jakiro. Exactly. On one side, you have Jakiro with Greaves, Ghost, uh, and some random small items. Doesn't matter. And on <laughs> the other fun. hand, you have Tims with just random small items <laughs> that don't matter at this point. And usually that can be the difference. You know, people sometimes they get absorbed in the thought of this net worth difference and we don't look at what the biggest drastic difference is between two roles and when you think about plus fours at this stage in the game having that sort of net worth gap it makes a huge difference especially considering these type of supports usually buy some type of utility whereas you know an anti-mage or a terror blade just looking for the next right click item they're investing in a later game scenario whereas these these supports are looking for the crucial saves the crucial repositioning tools speaking of High network targets such as CCNC and Antimage, Yavar and AM. Uh, Yavar is moving towards the BKB, and I believe CCNC he could buy Satanic right now. Uh, the only problem is if he does, he won't have buyback. Yeah, and then if you get picked off, TNC have just been he did it. Did up hand. He, he just did it. Well, if they see the DD, they might just go. If th they're gonna move across to the pit now, if they see this, <laughs> whoever get, grabs that DD will probably just go straight into the pit. It looks like forwards are going to be the first ones that scout it. Things but come out. there might be a smoke coming from TNC. You can see the way they're, they've gathered up. Uh, Snake King has done a marvelous job out pushing this bottom lane. However, it is difficult versus the traps. Every time he out pushes, there's just a trap that ta takes control and just destroys your creeps. And if it's not traps, it's illusions that we're seeing now. And that's the beautiful thing about these two heroes on TNC is while usually that split pushing hero being valuable. There's a smoke. We're going to see a fight. And they're coming in. They don't want to hard commit here. There's this another smoke. smoke. This is a hard commit from both of these teams. CCNC is going to bait, but... Oh. He gets caught before he can BKB. He's got Cold Brace safe. Hex is going to come out right now. There's the Cold Brace straight away. Now it's going to be a beautiful reset. The power of Wyvern is known. When this curse is going to come out, Terra Blade. They're going to chain stun him up now to make sure he can't get that BKB out of the power strike. Going to try and protect him. Snowball across will buy them some time. And now the Sunder, the turnaround. MSS goes Scepter up to midway with Tims. Once again, the first casualty of war. Moving forward, CCNC jumping on the Gabby. He has no Sunder to work with. A perfect target for them to find. He'll try and stand and fight with the Satanic, but they're going to overwhelm him with damage. And no, in the meantime, they roll through and kill off your war. Our Mel's BKB is going to run out soon. He looks to back up here. Big trades on both sides. Now Cuckoo, the next target. Snaking sidestepping. Darkseid controlled up. The boundless strike was there connecting on the two. Cuckoo going to sidestep, move away in time. But Snaking, he zones him out. Armel almost out of health, has to back away. And Ford Gaming may have just secured the pit. Very well played by Armel, though, as he did not just completely bail on the Terror Blade. Instead, he jumps in, kills AM while the AM is killing the TB. At least makes it somewhat of a fair trade. In the end, they do lose that fight, no doubt about it. But. They do trade carry for carry. Uh, this Terrorblade is up in 40 seconds, though. And after he's up, they, they're still going to have uh, some time to work without the AM, uh, in which perhaps they can go into the pit. There is a thin window. And the thing is, they know AM didn't have buyback. That's why that pick up was so critical, because they saw that he'd picked up this his big investment, right, in that BKB. They knew that he wouldn't actually be able to get back in the fight. Anyone else, and you're at risk, right? You know CCNC is probably saving because he wants to keep CCNC fighting. is actually in the pit already. He has to be. You, if you let us go, TNC have advantage, right? 50% on that Roshan already, and uh, it doesn't look like TNC is ready to fight. None of these heroes are moving anywhere closer to the pit. They have a ward that scouted it out. Yeah, but look at Pi as well. He's so far forward, he delayed them by a good 10, 15 seconds, and that would be enough. Even if you wanted to defend it, you couldn't. Yeah. You just don't have the tools available to you, and as a result, CCNC will take his time getting bashed a little bit. Is he? He's waiting to give it to AM, right? Yeah. Uh, he just might be, exactly. Oh, oh look, he turned into Aegis. <laughs> well, now there's one for each. He can just pick himself up and disappear from existence. I don't think I've seen this before. I don't think I've seen No, it's, it's you don't usually <laughs> realize it. Can he you turn can into see, an axe as well? You can see that he's pinging it too, right? So it's not something that's 
Completely. Oh, they jump forward. They found the TA. Oh, Mel, he's in trouble here. And they chose to skew this. Epicenter power strike through as well. It's going to be enough. Oh, Mel is dead and gone. He has buyback, but doesn't want to have to invest. It might have to. Gabby being chased onto next. Fast enough to get away. And Buy then the back. buyback coming out on the side, though. Tim's gets himself up the high ground, but in the trees, he's stuck here. It's going to be a slow death to the power of the sandstorm. The snowball being used. He'll blink the out blink. just in time. But now you have to be careful. There's a small window. 4 4 to just invade, take the high ground, and look to melt through this tower. They have it. ages, they have cheese. We just bought, bought back on the TA. And Cuckoo's not there. He doesn't have a TP. They're submitting. They realize Ford are going to get a lane out of this. He'll finally arrive. Gets brought back in by the Chen. Needs to do something. Jump in. Warriors Punch going to come out right now. Hex on the sand kick. Protected by the Cold Embrace. They jump in from UR as well. The Wukong is down. Team has gone again. They'll find him. Buyback comes out. UR with the BKB still active. Going to zone them away. We'll take the tower. But the Wukong's still down. It should be enough time to take out the melee racks. And TNC, they're up against the ropes here. No buybacks left on the team. Ford will just back out. They respect the side of TNC. You they want to also see if they can maybe try and force a fake back scenario. You don't have to. You don't have to force yourself onto their racks so hard because there is nothing stopping you from waiting 60 additional seconds and going back in when you have Wukong's command, right? So, uh, and there's maybe when you find a DD as well, there's another one top. Okay. That's a problem for them. Okay, TNC moves out. They smoked as well. The TNC are gonna going to be the ones that find that DD, but Metamorphosis is running out, and he's the one that took it. So you're gonna have this TB hitting quite hard, but he's gonna he's going to be in melee form. Yeah. Can they get anything out of this? Trying to find snaking. Not the optimal target. Bar strikes across. Miss time though. Get stunned up. Golden Brace to protect him. You are moving him right now. Balance strike. Vacuum is down. BKB from Armel, but CCNC matches it with his own force. Jumping in. Gabby the DD. The right click form in melee mode. Trying to stand up against him, but now he's outnumbered. He needs to back away. Armel has already left him behind. EU. Gonna be chased down. They ping off though. They see the big kill opportunities. They're gonna move forward. Aras and Gabby out. Has a lot of armor to work with. You are actually gonna be melted away. No armor, uh, no mana rubber remaining. Courtesy of that reflection. They will leave someone behind though, and it's it's Tim's again. Poor Tim's. But an admirable death for a much needed cause. The TNC do manage to get everyone else out safely. They managed to get everyone else out safely, but he's dead for 70 seconds. 70 seconds that they will use to push this uh, mid. And I just have to comment Pilot Die once again. Uh, Sand King did get caught, but he's in the right position on his Winter Wyvern to use the Cold Embrace, to use the Winter's Curse if necessary. In that fight, he realized that it wasn't even necessary as they were winning it. And they repelled the TNC. They repelled the TNC with the DD and the smoke. Um, and I, I don't know what they expected with that smoke because everyone on the side of forward gaming is just so tanky. It's so hard to take them down. And this is one of the big differences between that last game and this one is Pylai Dai's positioning. Exactly. Compared to how we done on Oracle last game, always too aggressive, but always just far enough away that he can make the save without leaving himself vulnerable. Look at it again, Cold Embrace keeps Animage alive, keeps the push going. He understands his limits. And now Armel trying to just milk those limits. Dumps him right now with the Mel Bash, but is it going to be enough? Chasing through with his BKB about to run out. He needs to run and retreat. Balance Strike coming out. Connects under two as well. Snakey charging up the epicenter. The Wukongs is down. The Ice Pump perfectly just placed. Melting. Doxy is melting alongside Armel. He'll buy back, but they have no TA now. They're going to chase deeper. EU next to four. You are. He was the party in TNT's fountain. He's moving ever closer. Nice buff down. Gabby with the BKB coming out. No mana to work with, though. He can't defend him. Tell us he can't even use the Sunder. There it is. Arcane Boots. And able to make a choice. He'll move away with the surge. Tim's left behind once again. Will fall here. Gabby is do or die. Him and Cuckoo against the world. Metamorphosis and go because they're going to force it out of you. Boris right. Hits on the illusions. Gabby moves him with a reflection. Just sidestepping the whole time with that surge available to him. Crimson Guard gets activated. He's trying desperately to hold, but no BKB. They're ignoring him. They're just completely ignoring him. This is this is just sad. This is just sad. They're playing with him. He's trying to chase them down. Now they now they turn oh, their right, attention we'll to him. Yeah, he will kill you. You want our attention? Here it is. Exactly. Nice vacuum, but for what, Cuckoo? You've been pesky enough. He has 80 seconds. He can buy back. He buybacks. He has the metamorphosis to work with, but no BKB for 20 additional seconds. It is moves in reflection, but interrupted. Ice Path connects onto him as well. They don't want to hard commit though, they're just aiming for objectives. You are protected by the cold embrace. And heal up beautifully here. They even give him the cheese to make sure he has mana to work with. And now that he'll eat it up, Makapai down, Gabby stunned up, doesn't even get a chance to activate the Sunder. Now Cuckoo ran down as they call out GG. It will be Ford Gaming taking the second game and evening up to a 1 1 score for this two game two series. Or two game series. Two game series.